potato garden. We just put this fence in this week. We'll have a whole video for you on how we did the fence. But we clustered all the tomatoes together. And let's see if they lived. I mean, we have not peaked. Okay, go ahead and lift up. And let's see. We found these old sheets. Or actually, they're um, blankets. Mattress pads. In the basement. And tried those last night. So, let's see how they look. Oh my gosh, they look really good. It was freezing cold. I mean, see your breath sleeting at the end of May. Amazing. We had all these tomato cages on them, and we took the cages off, and we got these bamboo sticks and broke them in half because we had to have something to hold up so the blanket didn't lay on the tomatoes. So they look stunning. No wrinkles, no crinkles. The leaves are all really good. Okay, now we're going to go up to the other garden. And this one's the one in the shade. This one was a lot more difficult. <laughs> You'll see in a minute. Okay. And another um, mattress pad, which I hope works. I'm going to take that off. And before we heard the idea about fabric, we didn't know that fabric was the best way. We put all these little containers on them. Beautiful. All right, let's take some of these off. She's gonna, t you can go ahead and take them all off, Karen. And I'll get a peek here. Okay, here's my kale. These I had just planted the day before. I grew them inside and they're real fragile. But they did it, they made it. I, I can't believe it. Okay, that's excellent. And now, Let's go to these other kale. I have two kinds of kale. I have dinosaur kale, and I have a bee going around my ear, <laughs> or a wasp. I'm not sure which. Yeah, let's see what these look like. Okay, these are, um, ooh, they don't look as good. These have a little browning on them. Sorry, I'm on my phone, my droid. It's not quite as good. Can you see those little babies? They're okay. I think they made it. I think they're going to make it, but they are, they definitely got hit harder because you can see the difference. This is the um, dinosaur, Lacinato, Lacinato, I think. Somebody tell me if I'm pronouncing that right. It's an Italian word. Kale. And then this is the dwarf kale. The dwarf is a little hardier, a little bigger. So on to the next one. Oh, I hope these made it. You can't believe how long it takes to grow something. Even this little bit, this side, I'll put my hand up so you can see. This little thing took almost seven weeks to get this far. And then they, these went in about four days ago. Now these are kale we bought. How do they look? They look good. They're, pre they're pretty hardy. Okay, now we'll see what the rest of them look like. <laughs> it's like a game show. Let's see what's under bucket number one. Was that call cabbage? Cauliflower, Swiss chard. Wow, that's a delicate one. This is a little bit of um, yellower. That one didn't do as well. Okay. More cabbage. These are cabbage here. Cauliflower. These are hardy. Oh wow. The only all my arugula died inside. What I've learned is that and I'll say this over and over is that the leafy greens don't seem to do as well when you plant them by indoors. Um, I lost a whole two whole sheets of arugula. It came up and then it died. I think I probably overwatered it, but I'm not sure. But I'm going to plant a whole tray of arugula now that it's nice out, and it's going to come up a lot faster. Now you can't see these little babies. They were planted about three days ago, or maybe you can. A whole tray of lettuces, and I got little baby sprouts. These are, let's see, Martha Stewart's mescaline mix. And I have a row of romaine over here, which is just starting to come up. So that whole tray was fine. And now some lettuces. Go ahead. Oh, here are the basil. Basil are the most difficult to keep alive in the, in the freeze. How do they look? Wow. Little bit of a frost, frostbite on this leaf. But in general, and this one's sagging a little bit. Yeah, this one is the most delicate. It's a, this is sweet basil here, and that one, I don't know the name of it. Globe basil, maybe? Real delicate. But the lettuces did really well. Okay, we're almost done. Now these, 
are like the ones I showed you inside that are like crepe paper. They're butter, let butter lettuce or butter speckle, I think. And I just transplanted them about five days ago and they've done really well because they were pitifully weak. Let's see how they look here. Wow. I, I was just sure these weren't going to make it. They did. Awesome. And the last one, cilantro. We did really well. Oh, over here. I am so pleased. Okay, this one just went in zucchini. We didn't have a pot big enough for that one. So that one had to stay out through the frost. And let's see how these two cucumbers did. They're a little wilty, like that curling on the leaves right there that was not there before. But overall, I'm really pleased. Okay. That is our garden so far. There's a lot more going in. Obviously, the 80 plants in the sunroom have to go in. Um, but I am just ecstatic that we, we, we survived the freeze. And so my lesson would be cover them with little plastic containers or little plastic, cu uh, plastic cups, you know, like for picnics, those kind of plastic cups. And then put a weight on it so they don't blow away and then cover the whole thing with a blanket. I also heard like professional gardeners actually turn a sprinkler on and they run water all night because the movement of the water actually stops them from freezing. But that's like, I would not feel comfortable doing that. I think our method really worked well. Uh, fabric's the way to go. Okay, everybody, um, if you like this video, I sure would love to hear your comments down below. And um, tell me if you have any good ways to protect the plants in a freeze. And go ahead and give it a like if you liked it. And head on over to my blog at uh, juicinggardener.com. Thanks so much. Oh, and make sure you join my channel so you can see we're going to have a lot of great videos all summer long. All right, take care. Bye-bye.